Hello. It's late and I'm holding in my hands a small box of chocolate bunnies. No. That's not quite right. Um I'm instead I've got in front of me uh it is late, but I've got in front of me a large bowl of Fruit Loop cereal, which is potentially much better than a small box of chocolate bunnies. But um, this is not about the cereal. Instead, I'm in my OpenSim installation. The lady in front of me is actually a nice model that I grabbed from a great resource on the web called Archive 3D. <coughs> Let me pull this down here. Archive3D.net, where you can get um, all kinds of neat 3D meshes for pretty much anything you can imagine. I I think their their focus is mostly on on architectural stuff. Um, so you get a lot of uh, decorating items uh, for very modern living. Uh, it looks like you know you. You're in an IKEA catalog, but also you get some people um, drivable stuff. Um, anything. Um, most of the meshes are, or pretty much all of the meshes are in a um, uh, what is that format called? Let me have a look. Um, wavefront, an object format, or uh, in, a, in a format of uh, 3D Studio Max, and need to be opened in Blender and converted to a Colada file first before you import them. And actually, many of them are really high poly stuff, so you have to really tune this down. I had to remove more than half of the polys of this model in order to act to import it and it's even in separate pieces i mean the cl the clothing is separate the torso the limbs and the hair and still um this thing has like i think between 150,000 and 200,000 uh vertices so i just imported it to see if i can and I can. I mean, it's um, proof of concept. Uh, the only problem I do sometimes have with stuff from that side is, and you can see that here, um, Blender and I think 3D Studio has two-sided vertices, whereas in OpenSim Second Live, vertices have only one surface, and the other, and the opposite side is transparent. So, sometimes you have um, a surface that is inverted, like some strands of the hair on this part here, and they look like they're not there, even though they are there, they're just, you know, inverted, so you can see them from the opposite side. Which is really not the way it should be. It looks like she's got a bald spot here. Um, but uh, that's okay. It's just I just imported it to see if it works. It works very nicely. <coughs> but uh, this is also not about uh, meshes, even though it is somewhat. I wrote um, a small tutorial, actually a large tutorial about um, lag in OpenSim and Second Live. And um, after that, I watched a few things on the web while working. I, I usually do that. By the way, this is my weighted companion cube. Um, I hope nobody at, at uh, Steam will sue me for using a portal thing. But it, uh, that's something I, I got from another web resource, really great web resource called BlenderSwap.com. Swap. Golly. 
dot com. Um, well, you get all kinds of um, mesh models for Blender, and um, they also had the weighted companion cube um, and this cool portal gun. Zoom in on the portal gun. Portal gun here. Um, among other things, uh, mo all, almost everything I've seen so far, there is under a very, very liberal Creative Commons license, so this stuff is absolutely free. Just like in Archive 3D, the stuff is also free. Archive 3D has their own license, which basically says pretty much the same as Creative Commons. You have to you know, attribute to them, and you cannot sell, sell them as they are. But other than that, you can do pretty much what you want with, with that stuff. And um, <coughs> Blender Swap uh, requires you to um, sign up there, and uh, they limit your download to 100 megabytes per week. But uh, other than that, you can just load up with really great models. Um, and again, have to convert them to Colada and. Uh, yeah, then import them into your OpenSim. So, weighted companion cube. Um, now, what I've watched is um, Pathfinder Lester's little talk. Um, What was the title? Golly, I keep forgetting stuff. Um, but luckily, it's just a few clicks away. Virtual Worlds presentation for 2012 Virtual Enterprise Conference and the, at the Glender University. Um, it's titled The Right Tool for the Right Job, Best Practices for Virtual Worlds. Pathfinder makes pretty good points as usual, um, but he mainly talks, almost exclusively talks, about Unity 3D and the Jibe platform of Reaction Grid, which is, you know, I mean, all right. I mean, he's employed by Reaction Grid. Why not talk about their products? If they like them, if they feel strongly about them, then I'm not going to stop them promoting them. I just... And this is actually the topic of tonight. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Unity. Because Unity, more than uh, anything, is sometimes um, promoted to be this huge deal breaker that will do all the things right that Second Life does wrong. Unity is a on its onset, a 3D gaming platform. That means they provide you the engine and the tools to create 3D games. <coughs> it's just pretty cool. Um, and I think um, we need that. What you also can do with it, though, is you can create virtual environments. So that kind of makes um, people compare it to stuff like Second Life and OpenSim. And um, there's where the trouble starts, because Second Life and OpenSim can also be gaming platforms, but they are a little bit more than that, and they are... They have, I think, different goals to what Unity wants to achieve, because... Mm, Second Life and OpenSim, as Rod Humble puts it, and I quote, are shared creativity tools. That means you can be creative within the world just through the viewer, just by using the viewer and using the build tools, which, you know, as primitive as they are, still work for 
of great stuff. Um, just making a bunch of cubes here. By the way, have you seen my voided companion cube? Nobody needs plywood anymore because we have companion cubes. Um, so th this shared aspect is kind of missing in Unity, which wouldn't be the big deal, really. Um, I mean, I'm I'm creative all the time and uh, pretty much on my own. So I rarely, if ever, build with someone else. And you probably could get some kind of a shared aspect into Unity if someone, you know, creates one mesh and you just use it for your stuff and make something else out of it. So uh, that's okay. But what Unity is not is um, it doesn't have this virtual world approach. Unity is a platform for for scenes, basically. You can integrate it into your the, the Jibe um, software makes it possible to cr integrate it into your website and um, have some kind of a virtual space there for visitors to explore. The difference is the visitors will mm, at best be able to choose from a set of pre-configured avatars. Whereas in OpenSim, I mean, you are pretty much yourself. This is um, one of the big, big, big aspects of Second Life in OpenSim that you create your own avatar and retain, the, retain this um, identity and um, look and behavior throughout the metaverse wherever you go. Um, have you seen my portal gun? There. Portal gun. It's also wetly. I wanted to, to import it, but it's a Blender model that needs a lot of texturing, so I didn't. Um, but so Unity does not provide you the ability to retain a virtual identity. Um, this is a pretty much a deal breaker for me. I mean, this alone. It also does not give you an inventory. So you cannot ac really acquire virtual goods or uh, carry your, 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 your pouch of magical items wherever you go. And instead you have to kind of work with whatever the person who is creating the game or the scene for you um, gives you from the onset, which is pretty much the same deal you get with every computer game. Um, in all kind of computer games, you can just choose your avatar if you can. In most of the games, they just give you uh, their default character and you have to, to use that. But or, in in the very few games that give you some kind of choice, you can choose one of a set of like four avatars and play their part in the game. And um, well, you cannot really transfer that avatar, even if you liked it, to another game and play the same person. Like say, um, the person you played in Portal in Half Life, or Left 4 Dead or Counter-Strike or wherever else you want it to be. So uh, for people who really love the metaverse and the virtual environment and really want to live there, not just visit a scene that someone else provides, this is uh, <clears throat> this is really not what I'm looking for. Um, instead, I think OpenSim can be so much better suited at that if it would get um, over the setbacks it has. 
Um, because I think, you know, Unity's setbacks are pretty much insurmountable. Um, you know, in, in order for them, they, they provide you with a great graphics engine and optimized meshes and, and all kinds of stuff you can buy on a Unity marketplace, all kinds of models for your scene and all kinds of scripts and, and things. Um, so it's it's really easy to use and to put together your your um, your scene, your um, background, your your three D space. But um, <clears throat> you can't just go ahead and from one moment to another implement a let's say inventory or a um, an avatar system because there is the whole back end that is missing the database that will retain your your user the 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 kind of mm, uh, interfaces that would uh, integrate that and and would be, make several unity instances talk to one another in order to to uh, recognize your avatar mesh. Um, stuff that we already have in OpenSim. And um, what OpenSim lacks compared to Unity is the, the shiny newness. OpenSim is a little bit older than Unity, so Unity is the new kid on the block and everybody's kind of excited about it, which is okay. You know, I mean, everybody deserves their 15 seconds of fame. Um, and the improved graphics. Unity performs pretty well, actually, because it has not so great graphics, Not at least not from what I've seen. Um, from the Unity worlds I have visited, maybe there are others that look better. But um, the reason why it perf why it does perform that well is because um, it uses very optimized meshes, very optimized avatars, which actually brings me back to the talk about lag. Um, the Unity uh, the people who are creating content creating I hate that word content creating models for unity are it seems professionals who know what to do um, so they are creating models that have a low polygon count optimized um, texture maps and um, really don't need much of, of 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 rendering power to display that scene so um they have some cool backends but uh, a lot of the performance really goes to that optimized uh models which will uh which will make the world perform much smoother than Second Life or OpenSim currently run. It doesn't really necessarily mean that it looks better. It could potentially look better. Um, you know, I mean, everything can look great depending on how you make it and uh, how good the skills of the people are that, that make stuff. So it can potentially look better, but then Second Life and OpenSim can potentially look amazingly great too. And um, so I'm not so sure about Unity as a replacement or actually even a, a competitor to OpenSim. There are certainly some legitimate uses for it um, if you only want a, a, a 3D scene for people to visit, if you don't require people to retain their identity, if you like for example are um, 
and um, an architect who just wants to show clients a model of the house you made for them. You don't really require them to have their virtual persona while they just go inside your model and look around. They can just use a pre-configured avatar, or actually no avatar at all, just a moving camera that kind of sh looks at it from a first-person perspective, which might even be um, more um, immersive for them. So Unity would be great for these kind of purposes, but for an interconnected metaverse, it really isn't. And I'm, I'm really not excited about it. I don't. I have no incentive of doing anything in Unity because it's really not what I, what I want, what I like. Um, The thing that I wanted to stress in my article about the lag, which seemed to be pretty well received, even just a few um, hours after I published it, is that if we would educate ourselves and make the world um, Or crea create and and um, design the world as professionally as people would create worlds in computer games, then it would perform just as smooth and and perfect as computer games do, and um, would look as amazing as well. Um. But actually, a lot of people are already doing that, and that's why I'm, why I'm here in, in, in Osgrid currently, because I have seen an amazing region just the other day, and I can't find it anymore. Let me see if one of the people here knows where it is. Let me show you a different region, which I've also found uh, recently. Sierra is pretty good too. Because a lot of really nice romantic places in Second Life have closed down, which I just um, discovered when um, we were when I was looking for for places to go for our Valentine video, our Valentine's Day video. Um, probably due to you know an economic realities that uh, 
you can't just um, run a sim on donations. That is just something that is really hard to do. So without some external funding, you just you are paying out of your pocket. I know that because I've done that myself. Um, but then in OpenSim, where regions are much cheaper and easier to run, you can actually recreate some of the really nice and um, popular places of Second Life. This is, for example, a an homage to the Lost Gardens of Apollo, called the Lost Gardens of Sol, which is an Osgrid and a region called Lost Gardens, and I just thought it looked great. I just thought it looked really amazing, and um, is one of the places I would highly recommend people uh, to visit when they ever get a uh, on a tour across the metaverse. Um, Osgrid, <coughs> most if not all of Osgrid is available on is uh, on the, through the hypergrid. So you don't even have to have an account on Osgrid, you just teleport here from whatever place you call home. Um, I'm coming here from my own OpenSim installation and you just have a good time and go home again. By the way, have I showed you this portal gun? goes with me wherever I go. It's amazing. It's even better than the companion cube. The companion cube stayed at home and kind of was pretty sad. Um, so, that's it for today. I really don't know what the point of this is. But I'm going back to my cereal, and uh, you have a good day. Thank you very much.